Hey everybody, and welcome to our week two of our Postage Pals. And this week, we've been doing some hide and seek. So I trust that everybody has played that game at one time or another uh, to hide something or, or somebody go and hide and then someone count while they're trying to hide. And then you, ready or not, here I come. And then you go to try to find them where they're at. Uh, I know when I was a kid, we played this all the time, especially when it was rainy and we had to be inside. We always would play hide and seek. And I remember as a little boy, one of the great things, I, I used to try to find those hiding places. And my, uh, not, I guess probably the best hiding place I ever found was in the closet. And my dad had this great big, huge overcoat. And I used to get in that overcoat and he had them great big tall boots. And I would put my feet in them boots and put that overcoat around me. And I was really hard to find. You know, we always try to find the best places to hide. And so uh, today I have a little, uh, I have a little trick that I'm going to bring. And it's a, uh, a trick that comes and it's a 1971. And this is a uh, 50 cent piece, half dollar. And so this is, this little thing, it, it always tries to get away. It always tries to hide. Now, there, there are not very many of these. And so um, these are, uh, these are our, our, there's not a whole lot around in circulation anymore. Uh, and so, but one of the things that you got to do is you got to, you got to watch them because they, they always try to get away and they make my hands kind of slippery. And, and so, uh, I'm just going to try to, and just like that, that rascal will get away from me. And I don't know where it always goes because it, it, it just fl floats around, but you know, I can't help I think I was. There's always a spot where I can find these things. And if I open up my card case just like that, and, and uh, there it always comes that way in the very back of where I keep my business cards, sure enough, there is my 1971 50 cent piece. These things just try to get away from you from time to time. I'm going to put this one right. Tell you what, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to put it in my pocket so I don't lose it again because those things will get away from me. So hide and seek. You know, if you don't know where to seek, sometimes it's uh, it's easy for us to lose things, isn't it? And so um, this lesson about hide and seek dealt with uh, Jeremiah. And, and Jeremiah, the Bible was, was telling us there that, um, that, that God told Jeremiah, I've got a great plan for your life that you can't hide from me. Uh, matter of fact, the Bible goes on to say that Jeremiah even tries to, to, uh, to talk God out of using him or give him an excuse of why he, he shouldn't use him. Uh, and I asked some of these questions in here in this hide and seek that, uh, what kind of things do we try to hide from others? Well, we try to hide things from others that, that we don't want them to see. Maybe things that we would be embarrassed for them to see. I know when my Philip was a little boy and he would throw a fit when he was little, three or four years old. And uh, and one thing that, that Crystal would do is she'd take out her phone and when she would start to film him, he would stop because he was embarrassed for anybody else to see how he was acting. And sometimes those are some of the things that we try to do. We try to hide those things that we don't want anybody else to know. And, and then we try to hide things that we've done wrong too. And, and when we, we feel those things in our heart and that we've done wrong, especially when the Bible says that we've sinned and fallen short of what God expects for us to do, uh, and we know that we've done things that are wrong, then the Bible tells us that that's the time that we have need to ask Jesus into our heart to be our savior and to find forgiveness for our sins and, and it goes to this next part and that was one of the questions i asked is why does jeremiah try to give god an excuse not to serve him well let me go to that and, and say from the very 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 beginning um, when adam and eve were in the garden the bible says that that adam when he had done wrong that he hid from god even there in the Garden of Eden. And as God came in the cool of the day, the Bible says in, in Genesis chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, that Adam and Eve hid from God because they knew that they had sinned. Their eyes had been opened. Um, and, and so it leads me to that next question there is, what does God ask you to do to serve him? Well, he wants us to, to do everything we can to serve him to the best of our ability. And it leads me to another guy that tried to hide from God, a guy by the name of Jonah. The Bible says he went into a ship to go to the exact 
opposite place of where God told him to go. And we all know what happened to Jonah, that when he tried to hide from God, he went down into the ship and went to sleep. And the Bible says that, that the, uh, the waves beat against the ship and the ship was about to sink. And so the sailors took Jonah and threw him overboard and uh, God had provided a great fish to swallow him. And he was in that fish for three days and three nights. Uh, and so we know that, that there was no hiding place for Jonah. And, and so I believe God asked every one of us to serve him. Now, for us, it may not be for us to go to a different city and tell them that they've sinned and God's going to uh, God's gonna bring judgment against them. But we can, uh, in service to God, tell somebody that's our next door neighbor at school or tell one of our friends or tell somebody how much Jesus loves them and that God cares for them. And then I asked that last question, what kind of plans does God have for you? And I can't help but know for every single one of us, God has great plans. He's got great things in store for you to do for him. He wants you to be available and say, yes, Lord, however he asks you to. Sometimes you and I, we may not say, well, I don't have that ability to do what some people do. I look over at Miss Amanda as she plays the piano on Sunday morning, or I look over at Brother Travis as he plays the guitar. I don't have that talent. I can't play. I'm, I'm not very good at any of that. But you know, God didn't call me to do that. God asked me to be faithful to do the things that he's asked for me to do. You don't have to be like everybody else. That's what's so wonderful about serving God. God's got a plan that's just for you. And it doesn't involve maybe anybody else's talent. He puts a special talent in your life so that you can serve him. Maybe you can sing. Maybe you have the ability to make people feel comfortable and welcome. Maybe you have that ability to, to be an encouragement to somebody and pat them on the back and tell them that they're doing a good job. God calls every one of us to serve him. Now, it leads me to the passage of scripture that I would want uh, to, to share with you tonight. And it comes out of Luke chapter 19, verse 10. And this is what Jesus says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Verse 10, Jesus says, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. So Jesus is the one doing the seeking. As we've played hide and seek in our lives, Jesus wants us to know that spiritually he is seeking for every one of us. You see, he wants a relationship with us because he loves us so much. It doesn't matter that we've sinned because the Bible tells us that Jesus paid for our sin. It doesn't matter that you may say, well, well, Brother Cal, I feel like I've done some awful things in my life or I've not obeyed my mom and dad or I've done things that I know I shouldn't have. I've lied, I've stolen or something I, I've done that I know is wrong. You know what? Jesus says, I love you. The Bible tells us that even while we were sinners, even while we were doing wrong, that Jesus loved us enough to die on the cross for our sins. He is coming, as he tells us here, to seek us that we have sinned, to let, to let us know that when we've sinned, he still loves us and he wants a relationship with us. He comes to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, when you and I come to that point in our life to realize that we have done wrong and we have sinned, then it puts us in the spot where we realize that we need a Savior. And the only Savior that there is, is Jesus. Jesus says, I've come to seek and to save you. He tells us in John chapter 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He is the only way to God. So that you and I can, in our life, that we can say, I know that I've sinned. I know that I, and I can't hide my sin because Jesus sees every part of us and he knows every part of our being. That's something we can't hide, but he loves us despite our sin and he loves us enough to tell us that he would die on a cross for our sins and that you and I could have an eternity with him in heaven. That's what he tells us. He loves us so much. And despite our sin, he is seeking every one of us. We don't have to try to hide our sins with Jesus. That doesn't mean that he won't love us. As a matter of fact, it makes us that more valuable to him because he loves us so very much. 
So this next week, we're going to be uh, doing some fun things. I'll be mailing out to you. And, and one of the things that I'm going to be mailing out to you for every one of you is to be making something this week. Um, and it's going to be making your own boat and uh, your own paper boat. And everyone will be getting these instructions in the mail and your boat will come out to look like that. And so I will be adding a little bit of uh, here at the end to let you know how to fold those. If you have an issue or something like that, that you can watch on our video and, and it'll help you make your own boat because in our mail out, there's some things I'm gonna ask you to do to this little boat. So uh, I look forward to, if you're able to come and, and visit here with us, on Sunday, I look forward to having you. Our early service is from 9.30. That starts at 9.30. And anybody that's over the age of 50, we invite to our early service. And if you're under the age of 50, we invite you to come to our 11 o'clock service. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. But if you can't join us in person, that's okay. Join us there on Facebook as we will be having our morning worship service as well. And then I look forward again to next Wednesday when we have our postage pals again. I look forward to seeing you whenever we can. May the Lord bless you.